Hello and welcome to another episode of Second Hand Stories. This is a place where I tell you stories. What kind? Well, histories, mysteries and unbelievable stories. Today's story is extremely thrilling and totally wild, literally. But before I tell you about the story, let me tell you this. In 2005, I saw a movie. Its name was Kal. And the movie was set in a national park where there were tigers that were killing people in the end it turned out that the tigers were ajay devgan which was a little strange but in the context of a horror movie it kind of made sense today's story is kind of similar it has a lot of things that karl touched upon man eating tigers it's set in the wilds of uttarakhand and the protagonist of our story is jim corbett the man after whom the famous national park is named the only thing missing is ajay devgan here's how the story begins the year is 1903 and jim corbett who will later go on to become a world renowned hunter tracker and naturalist in the later years of his life especially he was known to become a conservationist he championed the cause of the wildlife in the face of increasing deforestation but in 1903 he's a young man who's starting his life as a hunter and he's not yet hunted a man eating tiger so in 1903 jim corbett is hunting with his friend eddie knolls and that's when he first hears about this incredibly vicious tigress eddie knolls tells him a story of a tigress that was hunting and haunting villages in nepal this tigress had racked up a body count of 200 people and it was becoming such a big problem that the government of nepal got involved the army was sent in hunters were sent in but this incredibly crafty tigress had evaded all of them the only thing the nepalese army managed to do was they managed to drive this tigress out so this tigress fled from nepal and entered into uttarakhand there she made the district of champavat her base and she started spreading out causing widespread havoc four years later in 1907 jim corbett was even more surprised to find out that this tigress had still not been killed in fact in the interim four years she had managed to kill a further 230 something people this tigress had now managed to kill 430 plus people it's in 1907 and jim corbett who was born in nenital in 1875 and would eventually live most of his life in the area in 1907 he is met by the deputy commissioner of nenital and he is told to get on to this case jim corbett agrees to do this job and he waits now for this tigress to strike again and he didn't have to wait long because pretty soon news comes in that this tigress has attacked a woman in a village called pali immediately jim corbett packs up and he takes six men with him six porters and they rush to pali when they reach the village a incredibly somber sight meets his eyes the woman was killed 5 days ago and not a single villager has stepped out of the house for 5 full days the village is in disarray it's completely unsanitary but yet not a single person is daring to step out even when jim corbett comes the the people are afraid very little information is coming out to him so jim corbett decides that that night he is going to set up camp and try to take this tiger down in the night from the villagers he's heard that this tigress was heard growling just meters away from their house the villagers have told him that there is a particular road and every night this tigress would walk down it so jim corbett he decides that he is going to sleep outside beside this road 
waiting for this man eating tigress he picks a spot next to a tree and with his back to the tree and with his rifle next to him he begins this long night and immediately jim corbett realizes that he has made a big mistake because the night is long and it's dark and jim corbett is getting scared he is alone out there with his rifle and in a days of half wakefulness and half dreaming he starts imagining that every sound is the tiger and he can see in the dark shadows of the night almost a dozen tigers coming towards him obviously this turns out not to be the case but it scares him nonetheless he starts chattering half from the cold and half from the fright in the morning the villagers find him and he's curled up with his knees tucked in under his hands and completely relieved that he's made it out from this night alive and this small anecdote tells you what this story is really about it's about a young and inexperienced hunter going up against an older and more vicious predator so that day the villagers finally tell him what has happened how this woman was killed and here's the story they tell him the woman was out along with other villagers and they had gone to collect oak leaves from the trees for their cattle this particular woman had climbed up a tree that was next to a ravine a ravine is basically uh, the the space between two hills the deep valley that forms there and in this ravine there was a small body of water that was also flowing and there was a tree next to it and this woman had climbed up the tree and she was collecting oak leaves the tigress had made her way into the ravine and had waited on a rock waiting for this woman to come down and when she had collected enough leaves and she was climbing down that's when this tiger had made its way to the tree stood up on its hind legs and yanked the woman by her foot she had been dragged into the ravine and then this tigress had managed to drag this lady onto the other bank and disappear into the jungle all of this happened in seconds nobody could save this woman jim corbett immediately asks for the men to take him to the spot but the men refuse they're extremely scared and with good reason so jim corbett has to wait and bide his time over the next few days he manages to gain the villagers trust he proves to them that he's a capable hunter and eventually the men start opening up to him a few days later the headman finally agrees that he's going to take jim corbett to the spot where this woman was killed so he heads out there and he starts looking at the jungle to understand what happened jim corbett while growing up had spent a lot of time in the forest and because of that he was adept at reading and interpreting jungle signs he would often say that the accounts that people gave him they were unreliable but the jungle never lied if you inspected the area carefully you would know exactly what was transpiring at that particular point in the jungle almost like a sherlock holmes he would read the signs that were presented to him and at this spot where the tree was next to the ravine it was a gruesome story that the jungle was telling him in the ravine in the soft sand he finds these pug marks these heavy pug marks and through the pug marks he is able to establish that the animal was a female it was a tigress and she was slightly older he sees the spot where she waited assessing her prey and then he sees the carnage that took place at the tree the woman had desperately clung to the branches as the tiger tried to yank her away the struggle could be seen in the branches where it, some of it was stripped off and strands of skin was still clung to the tree then there was dried blood all around it a trail of it leading down the ravine and back up onto the other bank he followed it until he reached these bushes where he finally found where the tigress had devoured the woman at the spot 
all that was left of her were a few bone fragments and bloodied clothing. When Jim Corbett had left the village, the family of this woman had told him that if you find anything of this woman, then please bring it back because the family didn't even have a single piece of her to cremate, which is why they carefully wrapped the pieces of bone and the clothing and they brought it back. Very soon after that, Jim Corbett reaches another village which has a similar story to tell. In this village, the victims happened to be two sisters. The two sisters had gone out to cut grass. And while they were cutting grass, this tigress had snuck up on them and had mauled the elder sister. He had grabbed her and started running away. The younger sister, in panic, ran after the tiger, waving her sickle, desperately trying to get the tigress to let go of her elder sister. The tigress had let her pursue her for a while and then she let go of the elder sister and turned around, snarled and went for the younger sister. The younger sister had turned and run down the hill screaming. The villagers had heard it but they just looked on helplessly. Thankfully the tiger eventually gave up on the younger sister, turned around, went back, picked up the elder sister and dragged her off. The younger sister reaches the village and she's desperately trying to tell the villagers what's happened. But all that can come out are grunts. Eventually, she loses her voice. For the next 12 months, this woman did not say a word. She had a husband and two kids and her entire family didn't get to hear her speak. When Jim Corbett arrives in the village, he goes up to the woman and he promises her. He tells her that I am going to take down this tigress. And all the woman does is... She joins her hands and she touches his feet. It was a gesture that made Jim Corbett feel extremely helpless and feel much like an imposter. He realized how difficult life was for people who were living under the shadow of a man-eater. Their life was completely up upended. You were constantly forced to look behind your shoulder and you did not know where this stealthy, powerful, and cunning predator could attack you from. Fear clung to these villages. He knew that he had to do his best to track down and eventually take down this rogue man-eater. He spends the next three days trying to find this man-eater, but she is extremely elusive. This tigress had mastered the art of evading capture. She had an extremely large territory and she would spend, she was very cunning, so she would never spend a lot of time in the same area. She kept moving, traveling great distances overnight to put a gap between her and her pursuers. She always made it a point to attack a fresh village and attack it in a way that had never been done before. She never returned to a kill. It was a predator who knew what she was up against and she knew how to save herself. Three days later, Jim Corbett has found not a trace of her. So eventually he gives up and decides to move east. He moves eastward and makes it to the district of Champawat. It is at Champawat when he is met by the Tehsildar of Champawat. The Tehsildar is essentially uh, the revenue collecting officer. And the Tehsildar meets him and he updates him about what's happening in the village. The tigress has been spotted and the villagers are in extreme amounts of terror. This is good news for Jim Corbett though because at least now he knows where the tigress is. The next step is apprehending her. The Tessildar also tells Jim Corbett that he must stay in this bungalow which is where the tigress has been spotted most often. Jim Corbett agrees to stay in this bungalow and by the time they reach the bungalow it's evening. The sun has set and darkness is creeping up on the world. And Jim Corbett is extremely fearful that if the Tehsildar leaves now, there could be danger. So he begs the Tehsildar, just stay the night with me in this bungalow. But the Tehsildar is adamant. He refuses at all costs and he says, I must be on my way. The Tehsildar leaves and what happens next is extremely intriguing. Because Jim Corbett writes about this and he says that I stayed that night in the bungalow 
and something happened there but he didn't elaborate because he didn't want to talk about things that were happening beyond the laws of nature it's a small footnote in this story it's an intriguing one and he never brings it up again i'm assuming he met ajay devgan that's my best guess anyway the next day the tehsildar thankfully and to the relief of jim corbett reappears and the two men are talking their talking is interrupted by a man who comes running up the hill with extremely bad news he says that the tigress has struck and she has killed a young girl immediately the three of them rush to the village and jim corbett finds out what has happened the villagers tell them this story they say that the girl along with a dozen other villagers were out they were collecting dry sticks and they were in a relatively open ground and somehow this tigress had still managed to sneak up on the girl and carry her off the villagers were so terrified they hadn't even looked behind to see where the tigress had taken this girl off immediately jim corbett tells them i must go to the spot they reach the spot and again it's a horrifying situation the spot where this girl was taken there's a pool of crimson blood in contrast to that extremely red shining glinting blood is a blue necklace with blue beads on it that the girl was wearing which had been ripped off when this tiger attacked her he looks at the scene and he notices that the blood is trailing off into the jungle he follows the trail and he sees that bits of clothing have been strewn around and then he sees that in a in a bush in a thorny bush there are clumps of the girl's hair he follows this forward and he comes to a place where there are thorny nettles and the tigress has pushed through with the carcass now jim corbett is stuck he is wondering whether he should go through with it himself when suddenly he hears footsteps he turns around and he sees that a man has come with a rifle this man says that he is a bodyguard who's been sent for jim corbett's protection by the tehsildar now this man is extremely extremely wishy washy he is not really uh, a person who knows his job and he was reluctant to come out here in the first place but he was also scared of disobeying the tehsildar so now jim corbett is stuck with this scared bodyguard he decides any way that he's going to pursue the wild cat so they push through into the nettles and they see that the trail of blood turns sharply left it goes down the hill and it comes to another ravine now over here there's a small steep drop it's not very uh the fall is not very much but it's a small drop and then there is a water course which is like a small stream that's running down jim corbett decides to go down but at this point the bodyguard is becoming a problem because this guy has been extremely scared during this entire chase he has at least a dozen times stopped jim corbett and told him that he can hear the tigress she's either behind them or beside them and every time it's a false alarm so jim corbett decides that this guy is going to slow him down so what he says is that look there's a rock there is 30 feet high why don't you climb on top of it and wait there the man does it he sits on top and when jim corbett is assured that he's safe he carries on in pursuit of the cat he goes down this following the stream until it reaches this junction where the stream meets another ravine and over there he sees something that has been puzzling him for a while from a distance he could see that there was something lying on the ground and he doesn't know what it is but when he gets close to it he sees that to his horror the thing that was lying on the ground was the leg of the girl it had been cleanly cut off right below the knee like an axe had fallen on it and it was lying in the stream he is looking at it and here's another instance of how jim corbett was not really ready for this cunning man eater because he is out in the open and he is distracted by the foot and suddenly he feels like something 
is watching him. Instinctively, he raises his rifle and fires. Fires twice. And then he sees that in front of him, on the bank in front of him, rocks, small rocks are falling down it and they plop into the water. He realizes that this tigress had been standing there watching him. And if he hadn't fired his gun, she would have sprung on him at any second. At this point, any other person, and by any other person, I mean me, would have turned around and left. I would have stopped hunting, definitely stopped hunting man-eaters, become an accountant or something. But Jim Corbett isn't me. He decides that he's going to pursue this cat. What he does is that he runs up. He sees that the bank will take a run up and then you can get on top. So he takes a run up and he climbs onto the bank. And as he gets himself up, he sees that there are plants there that have been pushed down by the weight of the stalking tigress. And they're just getting their upright position again. He sees a spot on a rock where she had laid down the carcass as she stalked him. He continues following her. It's getting tense because this tigress is getting annoyed. He can hear her growling from the undergrowth. This tigress has been used to people following her, for rescue parties following her. But she's not been followed this doggedly ever before and she's not liking it. From the jungles, her terrifying growls are emanating outwards. And Jim Corbett writes about how it was one of the most scary things that he's ever heard. It really penetrated through to his bones. But yet, he goes behind her. This chase lasts for four hours. For four hours, he's chasing this elusive tiger that's running forward with a human being. And yet, it's evading detection. For four hours, he could see repeatedly the undergrowth moving, but he never saw a single hair on this tiger's body. And then... The sun starts setting and he realizes that if he's caught in the jungle in the dark, she's got all the advantage. There is no way that he's going to encounter her and survive if he's caught here in the night. So he decides that he's going to give up and turn back and go back to the village. He turns around and makes his way back and he comes to the spot where he's left the leg and he knows that this leg will be useful for the family because he knows that they will need something to cremate the young girl. So he digs a hole and he puts the leg in there and he will send people back to retrieve it later. He then heads back and he finds the bodyguard who is still stuck on the rock. He is stuck there shaking. He was extremely afraid. He heard the growls and he thought that Jim Corbett was not coming back. So then he had started worrying about how he himself would get back to the village. But seeing Jim Corbett, he's extremely relieved, he's happy and he can't believe it. He comes back down and the two men set back off towards the village. As they're heading to the village, Jim Corbett is perplexed. He doesn't know how he's going to counter this animal. So they stop for a second and Jim Corbett takes out a smoke and he's thinking about what he's going to do next. The spot where they've stopped is on the top of a hill. It's on the southward section. And looking around this view, Jim Corbett suddenly starts getting an idea. The view we can see in front of him is like this, okay? It's got hills on two sides. There's a hill rising up in the north and there's a hill in the east. A stream cuts from the west and it goes eastward and it meets this steep hill. So it turns north and then there's a small narrow gorge that forms. This gorge is the most accessible route out of this area. And Jim Corbett's plan is this. He is going to get people to create noise on the northward side and drive this animal towards the gorge. And there he will be lying in wait with a rifle. He goes to the Tessildar and he tells them that this is what he's planning to do. And he tells the Tessildar, arrange some men who can create this distraction and drive this cat towards the gorge. The Tasildar says that he will do his best. The plan is to start on this idea the next morning. The Tasildar 
uh, talks to the men and the next morning jim corbett is extremely pleased to note that 298 men showed up to execute this plan the men are instructed to stand along the top of the hill and jim corbett tells them that wait for me to get to the other side wait for me to take my position and then start making noise the men agree and jim corbett sets off but he doesn't set off alone the tehsildar comes with him because the tehsildar is extremely afraid of what will happen with these villagers and their guns so he's like i think i'm safer with you so the tehsildar sets off alongside jim corbett but he's not used to traveling through the jungle he eventually has to stop so that he can take off his shoes because they're causing him blisters so they stop and it takes a lot of time and in that time the villagers assuming that jim corbett has taken up position start making noise so jim corbett now runs down this hill it's a precarious run he has to make it almost like a mountain goat jumping from rock to rock and he finally manages to get to the gorge and he takes a position in the grass he's waiting now for this tigress to emerge the men start making noise guns are fired drums are beaten it's a horrible din and as they make their way forward jim corbett spies this tigress leaping out of the jungle towards him as she runs towards him he is waiting for a shot but then the tehsildar gets up and with his rifle he takes two shots these shots miss the tigress and she whips around and starts going back up the hill despairing jim corbett gets up and tries to take one more shot the shot obviously doesn't hit now jim corbett is extremely worried because this tigress is going right back up where the men are he waits on tenter hooks waiting for the screams to start as this tigress leaps out at them but the tigress surprisingly doesn't go upwards she arcs to the left and starts going to the other side to the other hill as she does that she breaks from cover again and is in open ground when he takes another sight of her jim corbett aims at her and fires this time the bullet hits the tigress but it's not the best shot she now turns around to look at him and she starts making her way towards him this would have been a terrifying situation for anybody else but for jim corbett it was an opportunity she was giving him a better shot and he takes it this time it hits the tigress in the shoulder she is enraged she pulls back her ears flares out her mouth she is about to come at him now here's the thing jim corbett had three bullets he fired one when the tehsildar had fired and now he's fired the remaining two he has nothing else left in his gun he's wondering what will happen if this tigress leaps at him but to his surprise she's wounded and she decides to avoid confrontation so she turns and she starts heading up the hill she goes from rock to rock and finally reaches this flat rock projection and she makes her last stand there now again another person in this position and by another person i mean me would have gone home i did my best i took two shots come on but not jim corbett jim corbett decides to pursue this animal and here's what he does he asks the tehsildar for his gun the tehsildar says the gun's at my feet jim corbett runs picks up the gun and starts running after the tigress the tigress hears him coming and she comes out onto the flat rock and from above him she can see him jim corbett looks at her she is snarling on the rock he picks up the gun aims at her and then he realizes that the gun is faulty there is a gap between the uh, the barrel and the lock of this gun it has fired twice and it has fired fine but jim corbett knows that anything can happen with this gun if he fires it could blow up it could end up blinding him but there is no time to second guess he sees her roaring her mouth is open he takes aim at her mouth and fires the gun was bad the aim was probably not the best 
it doesn't hit her mouth instead it hits her paw jim corbett doesn't know what this tigress is going to do next but then as he looks at her he sees that that bullet was enough she totters in her position and then falls forward her head projecting out of the rock the tigress is finally dead jim corbett makes his way up onto the flat rock and he sees that he has to go up to the tigress he he's not entirely sure that she's completely finished but he hears the men coming down from the hill so he knows that he has to be the first person to get to the tigress he gets to her and thankfully she is dead and that's when he inspects her when he opens her mouth he realizes why this tigress had done what she had done he looks at her mouth he sees that her upper and lower canines had been shot by a gun by a hunter a bullet had broken through her upper and lower canines the upper canine had been snapped in half the lower canine had been broken to the bone and looking at her jaw he realized the truth about man eaters the tigers only become man eaters under extremely special circumstances human beings are not their prey they are extremely shy of human beings and they do not want anything to do of do with us many people have lived in tiger country for many years and not even seen a tiger in fact a lot of people have passed by tigers who are lying meters away from them and not known it they've been under the observation of these great cats and they've lived because the cat wants nothing to do with us there are special circumstances under which these cats attack and a few of them are if the cat is injured like this tigress was if they are old and they cannot hunt for prey or if they deem us to be a threat which happens when human beings encroach into their territory or if we back them into a corner and this tends to happen more and more as deforestation takes place and villages expand further and further into wildlife territory the villagers end up taking the tigress back to the village to show the other villagers because they know that the terror of this tigress will not be abated unless people see her with their own eyes after that jim corbett skins the tiger he takes the skin back to the village where the two sisters were attacked and he comes back and he tells the younger sister the tigress is dead and to his surprise and to the surprise of everybody else the woman finds her voice again she runs from door to door telling people that the tigress is no more and finally after a full year her husband and her kids get to hear her voice again and that's how jim corbett killed the man eater of champawat I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, then please leave a like and a comment. Do let me know what other stories you would like me to cover by leaving them in the comment section below. These stories are filmed in front of a live audience. They are not written, they are performed. And if you'd like to be a part of the audience, then you can become a member of the channel. Uh you can become a member by clicking on the join button on the profile. Uh as usual, this video is brought to you by My Career. If you'd like to support my career then please check the description below for shows and other things I'll be doing that's about it I hope you stay safe and until next time bye bye